Nate Schmidt, my good friend. So grateful for you to be here. Our first episode, widely acclaimed. People really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to have you back. Thank you for coming back to the show, my friend. Dude, always, man. Always down. It's funny when you, you texted me the, the Calendly link and you were like, I think you said something like, let's catch up. And I was like, yeah, like for sure. Like just talk on the phone or like podcast. And I, I didn't even know which one it was going to be. And I, didn't, I feel like the conversation is probably going to be pretty similar regardless. But yeah, it's good to be back, man. Good to be back. I'm glad that people enjoyed the first one. And hopefully we can make the second one even better, man. Even freaking better. Yeah. So I don't have too much on the agenda. So let's just start off with how you've been in the last 12 months since we recorded the first time. What's happened in your life? Has it been that long? Not since we've spoke, but since we recorded last. Yeah. Wow. I, I didn't know it was that long. Um, dude, life's been good, man. Life's been good. <laughs> like, I really have absolutely nothing to complain about. Um, my, my, my day-to-day these days is basically just consisting of, like, working, hitting the gym, cooking a little bit, and playing a lot of golf. <laughs> and that's, like, about it. Hanging out with my friends and... You know, doing some other stuff here and there, obviously. But that's like the uh, the main stuff that I've been up to. It's been it's been good. I just you know, just been trying to get better in all aspects of life, just a little bit better each day. Not sure how much that's been working in business, but my golf game has improved significantly. So <laughs> that's always good. Why do you say in business you don't know how much that's actually working? You know, business is just like it's a lot of ups and downs. Um, right now and just just really the last i mean the last year has been i mean it's been really good in some months it's been really tough in other months there's just been so much craziness with the supply chain you know for anyone that doesn't know i do e-commerce um you know i own a brand or two with uh, my partner scotty and everything with coronavirus and just the the entire global supply chain it's made things really difficult prices have gone up shipping times from china to the us are super long right now um, and I feel like right now, generally speaking, like right now, it's, you know, it's July, 2021, the, the overall like demand for e-commerce, the overall e-commerce industry is not, you know, doing as well as it was a couple months ago. Generally summer is a little bit slower, but then I think you combine that with the fact that everything's kind of opening up or already really has opened up in most, at least, I don't know, at least in the U S I don't know about the rest of the world, but you know, people are spending their money on things other than just sitting at home and <laughs> impulse buying random shit online. And, um, you know, the ad costs have gone up a little bit. So we've been we've been fighting these different battles. We've been, you know, putting in some really solid work on our brand. But the results recently just haven't been, you know, the, the, the numbers haven't been the kind of uh, the kind of numbers that you'd like to see all the time. But that's just kind of the nature of things. But, um, yeah, that's how it goes. So how do you deal with that mentally when you're putting in the same work you maybe were putting in six months ago when demand was higher, but the results aren't there? Where do you go mentally to get yourself to the point of saying it's not my fault or, or what do you, what is your mental thought loop like? So at this point, it doesn't really affect me all that much because I've been through this before. The first time this happened, like I was like, it, it was terrible. Like, it, I think we probably talked about that a decent amount on the last podcast. Um, you know, it completely wrecked my mental state and getting back from that was really tough. But now that I've been through that, it's, it's just like kind of a, I've already been through this. And I know that if I just keep doing the right things day in and day out, then, you know, the results will come and it's just going to be a matter of time and I can't really control when that's going to be. So I just got to focus on what I can control and, you know, enjoy my life in the meantime. For an e-commerce brand, what, are the things that you can control things you can control um you can control your marketing your advertising the types of ads you're running how often you're testing new ads how often you're trying to get better at the skill of advertising and of marketing um i mean the the things that are outside of your control are i mean you can you can control basically everything except for the the results Right, you can do everything you can to try to get the results as good as they can possibly get, but you can't control the results themselves. So I think you just kind of got to focus on that. I mean, you you can control pretty much everything except for the results. Like that's the only thing. So you just got to focus on the inputs, and you know it can be really frustrating at times. I'm not gonna lie. Like when you feel like you're doing 
doing all the right things and you feel like you have been doing all the right things for a long time and just aren't getting the results, it can be really frustrating. But I think that's kind of the difference between the people who succeed and the people who don't is just that, that ability to kind of push through that stage where you're doing all the right things but just not getting the results yet and you just got to stick with it, like as cliche and corny as that sounds. Yeah, and how have you applied that to other areas of your life? Um, I mean, I would say that I've, I've kind of recently applied that and like, and in, in really in the process of applying that in terms of like fitness and, um, and nutrition and stuff, I got like pretty serious about my, my fitness and my nutrition, like four months ago or so. Um, you know, I've seen some decent results in terms of like my body composition and, you know, just everything like that. I've been like pretty consistent with it, pretty solid. And a couple of weeks ago, I was just kind of feeling like. I wasn't getting the results that I, I wanted to, you know, I, you see all these crazy transformations and stuff on Instagram and like these dudes who, and you know, it, it's a short period of time too. It's like three months or like, you know, four months. And then they're like, they go from, you know, looking like shit to just being freaking jacked. And then, you know, I'm looking at my kind of like, you know, my progress picks and stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, that's not, it, it's, there's a transformation there, but it's not like crazy. It's not huge. So that kind of like got me discouraged a little bit and made me want to, you know, be like, well, is this even worth it? Like, you know, if I'm just going to look like basically the same, like what's even the point? Um, and then, you know, then you just kind of, I just have to remind myself, like, I don't know. One, I think like something that I, I really try to do is apply my, the mindset that I have towards business. I try to apply that to like everything else in my life because I've, I feel like I've developed a really solid mindset towards business. And it's not as, it's not always like as straightforward as just being like, oh, so, well, if you treat one thing like that, then you should be able to treat everything like that. It, it's, it, it kind of is like that, but it's a bit more difficult for that to transfer over automatically. So I've been really trying to think like that and just kind of realize like, yo, the way you treat business, like you're in this for the freaking long haul, you're trying to build a brand that is going to take multiple years to get to the point where you want it to get to, um, you know, and fitness is the same way. Like it's going to take me multiple years to get the physique that I want and, you know, that's just the way it is. I'm only a couple months in, so just got to keep pushing. Yeah, it's a, a never ending process and a never ending game. Kind of switching gears here. I'd love to talk about e-com dispensary. That's something we didn't talk about last oh, time. I'd love to. And something that um, is really interesting because it seems like from the outside, it's something that people really enjoy. So what is e-com dispensary and how have you gone about building it? Yeah, so Ecom Dispensary, I guess the reason we didn't talk about it last time was because it didn't even exist. Um, Ecom Dispensary is like my private Ecom uh, membership group, I guess you would call it. I'm, I'm really bad at, at like putting this in concise terms, but it's, yeah, it's our, it's kind of like our private Ecom group. Um, it is comprised of a Telegram group. It's actually two Telegram groups. We have like one that's kind of like everything. And then we have one that's more advanced for people who are like actually experienced with it. And everyone can join that one, but you're only supposed to talk in that one if you have done like 50K in revenue at least. Um, that's per month So Telegram group year? where everyone's just kind of, just like total. Like if you've total. done at least 50 grand in revenue, like it's, it's not like super advanced, you know, it's not like crazy. Just like, there's a, there's a big skill gap between people who have made zero dollars with e-com versus people who've actually made you know some sort of money even if it's like not a whole lot of profit there's there's a big skill gap there so we have like kind of two separate things for that so that we can keep the kind of beginner stuff in one place and then the more advanced stuff in the other place um and yeah it's a telegram group we all talk in there and people ask questions people help each other out it's it's really cool because i've almost gotten to take a bit of a back seat with it and like I'm like I'll be completely honest like I don't post in there every day like I'm not I'm not in there like responding to every single question because there's just way too many messages for me to be able to do that but it's been really cool to see how everyone in the community has really like kind of stepped up to help each other it's been it's been really cool to see that so we have telegram groups and just like everyone just kind of tries to help each other out ask questions and shares their wins and everything like that um, and then me and Scotty as a part of the e-com dispensary me and Scotty put out it's essentially like podcast style content um, we put out like private content specifically only for the e-com dispensary. We do not post this anywhere else online. Uh, we record for about an hour and a half, two hours. It ends up being about an hour, hour and a half of content each week. And we basically pick out a couple topics related to e-com, to marketing, to money, to business, to, you know, hopefully talking about things that are going to help people succeed. And yeah, we just, we hop on, uh, we hop on Zoom, we record it, we talk through everything and, um, you know, we put that out once a week, so it's nine dollars a week for the uh, for the ecom dispensary, and we've got a couple hundred people in there right now. It's been it's been really cool. It's like it's by far my favorite 
thing, like our, my favorite offer that we've done, even though it's not like the most profitable, you know, nine bucks a week isn't like, you know, I'm not exactly rolling in the dough from that, but it's just really enjoyable to be able to talk to everyone in the group and me and Scotty just getting on and talking through these things on Zoom, recording it, putting them out as like these little podcast episodes, these trainings. Um, kind of the whole point of it is it's not like super direct, like some of it is, but it, it, most of it isn't like super direct, like tactical, hard teaching. Okay, so you should sell this product. You should, you know, market your things in this way. It's more so like we designed it when we originally started it. We started it with the kind of mindset of the way that you succeed is by just like getting better gradually over time that's like the you know that's the big secret success so we wanted to make something where you could kind of fill your brain with some sort of content that was going to help you do that in terms and you know e-commerce business online business etc so it's just kind of like something that we we feel like we put out there and it's like instead of watching netflix or instead of you know watching random youtube videos you can put this on it's something that you can just kind of listen to when you're cooking or when you're you know just going about your day or whatever and it's just like positive kind of material, I guess, that's going to, it, it might not be like, you know, oh my God, like this episode literally fucking gave me the best business idea ever. Although that does happen. I'm not going to lie to you. That does happen sometimes, but it's more so about just like the consistent exposure to the right kind of content over a long period of time can be really, really impactful. And that's kind of how we designed it. That's how we priced it so low. So that it's accessible to, you know, just about anyone. And yeah, that's really the main thing that we're doing over at Blue Ocean Ecom, my um, I guess my my info marketing business with uh, with my partner Scotty. That's the uh, that's the main thing. We're not really doing a whole lot else besides that right now. We're kind of focusing on our own ecom brands besides that. So yeah, that's the deal. Ecom Dispenser. If you want more information, I'll, I'll throw the plug out there. It's a shameless plug. EcomDispensary.com. I love it, man. There you go. And we'll we'll put that below. And I'm curious what you think makes for a great community of people who enjoy something online? I would say, I mean, first thing off the top of my head is that it's got to be built around some sort of common goal, some sort of specific thing that you're interested in. Um, you know, for us, that's e-com. Like everyone in the e-com dispensary just about is either heavily pursuing e-com, is already successful with it, or is like in the stages where they're really looking into it and wanting to get into it. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. And then I think like just kind of trying to foster that kind of like community spirit, I guess. And I'm not sure if this is something that we've done the best job with. I think that we could probably do a better job with this. Um, but we always try to encourage people to, you know, to talk in there, to ask questions, to answer questions. A lot of the people who are kind of like a bit further along in their journeys, we've really tried to, you know, to talk to them and, you know, encourage them to share their journeys, you know, the things that they've learned. It's, it's not just me and Scotty, you know, there's a lot of guys in there who are very successful with e-com and, you know, we encourage them to try to, you know, provide as much guidance as they possibly can. And yeah, I think those are some of the, some of the main things. Yeah. And the point about the, just getting exposed to the positive reinforcement or, or positive messaging, I think is a really important one and overlooked because I think what this podcast serves to do and what your podcast serves to do, it seems like as well is just act as that friend in the room that makes you a little bit better day after day. And I'm curious, what are some of your favorite ideas or episodes you've recorded from the Ecom dispensary? Mm. I mean, I think the, the number one thing that I really love about the Ecom dispensary is like as, as unsexy and boring as it is, the entire message behind the entire thing is just like that brutal consistency for a long period of time. Like that's, we, we are hammering on that. Like the, the, we mentioned that at least, you know, at least once a week and at least one episode. Um, I think kind of like being able to switch people's mindset because that was so huge for me is like, I always thought that you had to come up with some million dollar invention and, you know, it was just like about your ideas and whoever had the best ideas made the most money and, you know, when I realized that that was not the case at all, and it's like, it doesn't really matter what ideas you have, it's all about the execution of it. And that execution of it is just like, it's not something that happens once. It's something that happens day by day, every single day for months, years on end. 
And I think being able to hammer that into people's heads, like that's probably one of my favorite things. Cause I think that's like the most impactful thing that's actually going to get people to be successful. Cause for most people, like that's the thing, that's the thing that's stopping them. Like they're smart enough. They have all the information they need. The only thing they're not doing is just putting in that consistent, like, you know, two plus hours of work daily. Like if, if, if everyone just did that, you know, most people would succeed, but you know, it's easier said than done. What was the moment um, that that clicked for you? I think there's been a few. I think, I mean, I, intuitively, I think we all kind of realize this. Like, this isn't a, a fucking, you know, crazy new mind-blowing concept. Like, everyone knows that if you want to be good at something, you do it every day. Like, that's not, you know, that, that's not a, a new concept. Um, I think it really hit me when I first started seeing the results from it. Like, the first time it hit me was when I first started really seeing the results, like, probably three to four months in when I like actually started getting really serious about it and actually putting in that work every single day. Cause you know, for months I didn't see any sort of results and I was just doing the work and I was just like kind of second guessing myself and not really sure if it was going to pay off or not. And then once that money started coming in, I was like, Oh, like that's wait, that's, that's real. Like that's going to, to my bank account. Like that's money I can spend. Like that, that's, that's actual, that's money. Like, so that was kind of the first thing I think. And then I think the, the most recent time that that's really hit me hard is golf. Like I just, I just picked up golf, like in quarantine, when quarantine started like a year and a half ago. And, you know, I was shooting like probably like 120, you know, like I like, you know, par is like 72. I was shooting like 120. That's like terrible. And then I just, over the, the course of the last year and a half, I've just seen, like, I mean, I'm not practicing golf every single day, but it's like, probably most days, you know, probably like five days a week, I'm either playing or practicing. And I've just seen that progress, like firsthand, just going from and, and without even like taking lessons, like I'm, I'm basically just been like, teaching myself, like watching YouTube videos and, um, you know, just getting out there and trying shit for myself. And I've been able to, to go from that point into, you know, shooting in like the eighties, the wow. obviously is not, not amazing, but it's a hell of a lot better than I was. And just seeing that progress, it's just so funny because I've just I've seen so many parallels from from golf, like things in business that I had almost forgotten. Golf has really reminded me of them, and I think that's been a really beautiful thing. It's really fascinating, right? When you not only apply something, you know it to be true, but then you forget it, and then something else makes you remember. It it makes you realize just how how forgetful we are as human beings and how even if you've learned something once, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will know it forever. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's probably so many things that I've learned and forgotten and relearned. And it's just, it's funny. Cause like at a certain point, I feel like everyone feels like, okay, so I've got the basics down. Like now I, I need to, you know, focus on like the more advanced type stuff. And that might be true in some cases, but dude, I mean, there's just, there's nothing like just going over the fundamentals again and again and again, and just hammering that shit into your head because there's so many things I feel like that you, you might know, but that you don't like live by. Mm. And there's a big gap between knowing something and living by it. And if you can get from the point where, you know, cause when you know something you think you're like, okay, I know that, like I I'm, you know, it doesn't really register that maybe I know that, but I'm not actually implementing it in my day-to-day -day life. And then when you start implementing it, it's just like such a huge difference. And then that's another, you know, great reminder, like just because I know something doesn't mean I'm doing it, you know? And I think that there's, there's a few key things in life like that, where you just got to constantly remind yourself that these are the things you need to do. This is how you need to live. What are those key things? I mean, there's probably a lot of them. Um, I mean, I think again, like the consistency thing, mm -hmm. that's like probably the, num the number one, like just stay consistent no matter what. That's like the number one thing. Um, I think another big one is just how important your mindset is and how, how much your mindset affects the rest of your life, your perception, the way that you perceive things, your thoughts, your, you know, just mental energy and stuff like keeping track of that. That's something that I've definitely lost track of, you know, periodically throughout the last couple of years where I've been, you know, I've gone through periods where I was like really in tune with it, really aware of it. And then, you know, not so much. And then when you get to that kind of stage, you don't realize it. Like you're, you feel like you're in like not that great of a place mentally, but you don't realize it's because you kind of forgot how important your mindset was.
And then when you kind of have that realization again, then you can start doing the work to try to, you know, rectify that. And then, you know, for me, I think we talked about that in the, the last episode that we did, like that was huge for me. That intentional work on my mindset was kind of the thing that lifted me out of that like funk that I was in for a couple months after I had these big failures. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think those are kind of the main two, at least for me that I tend to forget that like I can always use that reminder. So let's say someone didn't listen to the last episode and they just want to get into a better mindset right now. Are there practical things you can recommend for that person to start getting in the loop of a better headspace? Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing is you just like the first step, and this is like literally probably half the battle is just being aware of your thoughts of that voice in the back of your head. That's always fucking saying some shit, just being aware of that and trying to as many times as you can throughout the day, have that awareness of like, Oh, like that's the voice in my head. That's not me. Like I am not my thoughts. I think that's, that's like the biggest first step. Like if you haven't done that yet, just do that. And like, that's the only thing you need to focus on. And then that, that alone will like be such an improvement, honestly. And then once you have that awareness and you, you are constantly realizing throughout the day when you're having these, you know, kinds of negative thoughts, I think the next step from there is to replace those thoughts with positive thoughts, which is a lot easier said than done. I mean, I think that the easiest go-to is to just like replace those negative thoughts with thoughts of like what you want for your future, you know? like your ideal life, what you want, imagine that life, imagine yourself living that life, what that feels like, what that looks like to you. And just try to, you know, picture that in your head as much as possible. And whenever you have those negative thoughts, just like be like, okay, replace them with the positive thoughts. And again, like you, you're going to slip up and this is not like a, an easy thing to do because your brain is just like moving so fast all the freaking time. You're never going to catch it all the time. You know, like you're never going to be perfect about it, but you just have to have that kind of like, that state of mind where anytime that you can catch those negative thoughts and replace them or just notice them, like that's a win, you know, th then you're, you're doing better than you were before. And if you just keep doing that, you keep trying at that, you know, eventually I think it, it can kind of become ingrained in your, in who you are, you know, and then it's just like, it's just natural. It just comes, you know, that's how your day-to-day -day life is. That's how your brain works. And I think that's really the goal that, you know, everyone's trying to get to at least, at least for me, for sure. It's like cleaning a room. The job will never be done. You'll always have to clean your room eventually. But if you do it often, it will be easier. And if you're living in a clear, clean room, you could also be living in a clean mind. And what is your mind except the room that you are constantly living in day after day? You know? So I think it's a really important point. And the work is never done with cleaning your mind. But it is something that we constantly need to work on even when we have it figured out. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. That just reminds me of a, I saw a, a, a quote that, uh, I think, I think it was Andrew Tate that he like posted this on Instagram or something. And it was like, if you understood the power of your thoughts, you would never think negatively again. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry about that. You're good. Oh, Ailey, shut up. <laughs> We might need to, to do some uh, some extra work here in post. No worries, no worries. Dude's on my fucking front porch, blowing. It happens. That was just fantastic timing. <laughs> good to know. I won't schedule podcasts on on Wednesday anymore. <laughs> nah, it's all good, man. <sighs> all right, we should be good now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, where were we? About the the power of negative thoughts, Andrew Tate, right? Mm -hmm. So what were you saying? He did, it, was, it was a quote that was something like, if you understood the power of your thoughts, you would never think negatively again, mm -hmm. which I, it sounds good. You know, it sounds nice. Like you can't necessarily control the voice in the back of your head all the time, but you can control it if you're aware of it. Like if you, you know, you can control what you're thinking if you think about it, you know, I mean, Think about whatever you want to think about. Think about ice cream. If, if, I, if you want to think about ice cream, yeah, you can think about ice cream. You can think about chocolate chips. You can think about vanilla ice cream, mint chocolate chip, maybe. <laughs> you, know, you can think about whatever you want, but you have to be aware of it. You know, and I think that's why that first step is so it's so crucial, so important. Just being aware, being aware of what's going on inside your head, and not just taking that as like your 
just how things are because that can change, you know? Like, you can change the way that you think. And I think a lot of people probably should, <laughs> you know? A lot of people probably should change the way that they think, and that's completely within your control. How do you not start to believe that the voices in your head are you and separate yourself? That's a good question. That's a good question. I think, I mean, it's, it's kind of like built in into that awareness. I think like when you have that awareness, I think I picked this up from, um, from untethered soul, fantastic book. Um, where if you're observing your thoughts like that, then you are the observer. You are not the thoughts. Like if I'm looking at this microphone right here in front of me, obviously I'm not the fucking microphone. So it's the same thing with your thoughts. Like if you can look at it, if you can observe it, if you can see it, you can hear it, whatever, then it's not you, you know? So I think that's kind of like the way that you separate it. And again, it's not easy, man. It's not easy, especially if you're in a rough place in your life. If you've gone your entire life with, you know, your brain operating a certain way, it's not going to be an overnight thing to change that. Like it's going to take, it's going to take work and it's going to suck. It's going to be hard, but I think it's a worthy, it's a worthy battle to fight because everything starts in your mind. I mean, like, you know, some of the happiest people in the entire world are people who have nothing. And some of the most miserable people are people who have everything. So it's all about perspective. It's all about how you look at it. And I mean, that's like such an important concept. I, I can't believe that it, like, you, you don't learn that, you know, no one, no one talks about that in school or, you know, parents, I feel like don't even really teach that. Uh, at least, at least my parents really didn't, but it's such an important life concept. And that's, you know, kind of why, like, I just try to look at everything and it, you know, it's not perfect. Like it, I'm not perfect at this. It's, it's not always like that, but I, I try to look at everything. Like, you know, no matter what's happening, I'm trying to find the positive positive. and sometimes it's hard, but there's always, there's always some way you can reframe things so that it's a positive or at the very least, it's not like a, you know, completely like mentally draining negative. So if you know, <laughs> it's all good this guy it's all good so if you know that the the people who are happiest aren't the ones who have th are the most successful how do you still strive for success i mean i to me it's like kind of two separate things now when i first started in, in like you know an online business and stuff i kind of attached like okay so i'll be happy when i get this you know and then this at that point when i was first starting was like just being able to to live like just being able to support myself i didn't even care about making a shit ton of money like i just wanted to be able to support myself so i didn't have to get a job and i hit that like fairly quickly and then i realized that kind of like well i mean i'm in a different position in my life like i'm in a much better position but like i personally haven't changed that much so it's not like attaining this has like made me happier it's i mean it, it did in a way like i'm not gonna lie to you it did make me feel like better because i was like well hell yeah i don't have to go to class like i don't have to work for anyone i, I could quit this shitty pizza delivery job <laughs> i don't have to take shit from this asshole who's fucking telling me what to do all the time um but like in that i feel like that's kind of like external there's like i, I feel like there's kind of like internal and external happiness and if you base everything off the external like you're, you're only going to be as happy as like how good you're doing in terms of whatever it is that you value yourself with, you know, in terms of business or in terms of whatever it is, you know, for me, for a while, that was business. It was like, how much money was I making? That was how, if I was making good money, I was on top of the world. If I wasn't, then I felt like ass. And for me at this point now, it's like, I'm in a position where like, I'm not like set for life necessarily, but I'm in a position, you know, I'm, I, I have all my needs met. You know, I'm not, I'm not struggling for anything. I'm not worried about money. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm incredibly blessed for that. But to me at this point now, it's my like further striving in business isn't to make me happier. Like the achievements I don't think are going to make me that much happier than I am now. Cause I mean, dude, my quality of life now is like pretty fantastic. You know, like I get to wake up when I want, do what I want. I play golf all the time. Like I, I literally, I feel like I live like the life of like a retired fucking 65 year old. Like it's great. Um, but to me, the thing that really makes me happy is just like 
constantly getting better. It's mm. that constant progress, just continuous, gradual, just slow improvement over time. That's what really makes me feel great. So now I'm kind of doing it for that. And I'm just doing it to see that progress, you know, just to get better. And as long as I can look back year after year and say, I, I progressed. And it doesn't even have to be in business all the time. You know, it's not going to be, I'm not going to progress in business every year of my life. Like it's just, it's not going to, the numbers aren't going to keep going up consistently every single year for the next 50 years. Like I understand that. But as long as I'm getting better at something, you know, at the end of this year, like it, it's been a, it's been a pretty solid year business wise. It hasn't been like a, a blowout year by any means, but I'm going to be able to look back at this year and say, well, I improved my fitness, my physique pretty significantly. And I got a lot better at golf. Boom. Like that makes me happy. Just knowing that, that feeling of just knowing that I progressed at something that I cared about that was important to me. That's the thing that really makes me happy. And I think that's why you keep doing it because you just want to have that continuous feeling of, yes, I am making progress. Looking up at the mountain and climbing the mountain rather than actually being on top of the hill. Do you think you needed to get to that point of being on top? or quote unquote top do you think you needed to achieve success in business and 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 feel that external validation in order to get to the point of feeling happiness from the progress probably probably yeah i think it was just it was it was a weird case for me because i i didn't have to like go up a huge mountain you know, to reach like my, my, my initial level of success that I reached was like, it was just like that. And it was like a fucking straight vertical line. and It was amazing. But then that all it, it <laughs> went straight back down. And then from there, you know, I, I had, I had achieved all of this, you know, quote unquote success, but I, I don't think I'd really like paid my dues. Mm. You know, I hadn't like worked hard enough for it. I hadn't experienced enough like pain and loss and, you know, all those negative things that kind of come along with that. So, you know, the universe has a funny way of, of doing that, you know, plumbing me right back down. And then from there, it's just kind of been the steady grind up, you know, just gradually over time, just not going, not going straight vertical, not going straight back down vertical, just slowly, just up and to the right, just very gradually. And that's, dude, that's what I want. Like that's, I, I've learned that that's, that's like what you, that's better for you. Like it's so much better to just, like if I were to get, if I were to achieve my dream right now, if today, you know, my, my current big goal right now is to, you know, to build and scale and sell an e com brand for eight figures. You know, if I were to get a check for 10 mil right now, I don't think that that would be the best thing for me as a person. I don't think that I've gone through enough. I don't think that I'm mature enough. I don't think that I have the, you know, the foundation to be able to handle that in like a responsible way. Now, maybe I'd be, I think, you know, maybe I, maybe I could, maybe I could, but I would just, like, I'm totally fine with that taking a couple of years, you know, like that's, that's fine. I'm going to continue living my life. I'm going to continue enjoying things. And for the longest time for me, it was just like mentally, it was, it was always like I was pushing off doing the things I wanted to do because I felt like I had to reach a certain point in business. Mm. And now I'm just like, it's just so much different now. Like, I'm just like, yeah, like I'm, I, I know I'm going to get there eventually. Like, it's just a matter of time. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm, you know, I know it's going to happen eventually. And I just got to do the right things continuously, try, just try to get better and enjoy my life, you know, because... I don't want to sacrifice, like, I originally thought that if, okay, if I can sacrifice, you know, 21 to 25, and that will set me up for the rest of my life, like, that's worth it. And now I'm realizing that, like, it, like, would that be cool? Like, yeah, maybe. But I think it's much better when, instead of, like, trying to get it all at once, you just work on gradually getting it over time. And it just, it feels much better that way. And then you don't have to worry about that feeling of like, you go up super fast and then you got to come down just as quickly, you know? Things take time. You know, I think that gets, that was misunderstood by me so early on when I was just starting out. It's like, if you want to build something real and sustainable, it takes time. The same way it takes time for your body to build. It takes time for you to build a brand that people know and trust and respect. And it's like, if you try to rush that process, you end up in the place of having all these orders, can't fulfilling them all and, and going backwards a step. And it's like, that's really so true with life itself as well. So what would Nate of who was just starting out on his journey say to you saying, oh yeah, if I got 10 mil right now, it wouldn't, 
it wouldn't be good. What would Nate of old say? I think he par- he partially would have agreed, <laughs> but I think he also would have been like, yeah, but, but give me the ten. <laughs> yeah, come on, just give me just give, give me the fucking ten. Come on. Um, I don't think that I like I I realized because I mean when I was first starting I just had this like you know that what's the I think it's the the fucking that meme you know it's I think it's the Dunning Kruger effect where it's like you know you have like the the you know low IQ people you have the masses in the middle and then you got the high IQ people and the high IQ and the low IQ are saying the same thing and then the the you know middle is saying something completely different I feel like back then I was like the low IQ person where like. <laughs> I like didn't know that much, but I was just supremely confident. Like anything, I was just like, yeah, everything's gonna work. Like, cause I just didn't know. Like I, I hadn't experienced enough failure to like be like, oh, well, maybe this won't work. Like I was just like, no, if I'm gonna do it, like it's gonna work, guaranteed. Um, whereas now I feel like I'm, I'm more, it's like, what is it? It's like the conscious competence or like unconscious, you know, the, like there's like, you know, four of those, whatever. Um, you know, I was kind of in like the, unconscious competence mm-hmm. i guess because mm-hmm. i guess I, I i was fairly competent um but you didn't know but why now i'm like yeah like I, I didn't i didn't really know what i was doing but i was like yeah i just know it's gonna work you know and that served me well for a while um but then eventually i think you you kind of get to a point where you realize that you don't actually know as much as you think you know and that can be kind of paralyzing to to realize that you're not the fucking magic bullet that you thought you were <laughs> Um, and then you got to kind of got to go through that stage where you're like, you know, you go down and then you go back up and you kind of like just continuously get better. You continuously learn more. And then you realize that, Hey, I actually, you know, at this point, a couple years into this, like I, I do know a lot, like I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty seasoned in this. Um, but I don't quite have that sense of like pure, like crazy self-confidence where I think that anything that I touch is going to turn to gold. Cause I've, you know, I've gone through enough times where that hasn't been the case and reality has fucking smacked me in the face and shown me that, Hey, you're, you're not Midas, man. Like you're, you're, you're a pretty cool guy, but you're, you're not a fucking God. So kind of going through that has been, I mean, it's been a real transition, man. I feel like I've, I've grown up a lot and I'm really thankful for like business. The fact that I've been able to experience all this and learn all this, I feel like these are some of these are lessons that people, a lot of people don't tend to learn until they're pretty old. You know, and I'm just very fortunate that I'm getting to learn all these lessons when I'm in my early 20s. Business is really a vehicle for self-improvement and growth. And the same way that meditation is, the same way that starting a hobby is, it's like the same thing. It's all the same thing in, in that when we pursue something and give our all to something, it changes us in some real way. And... It's oh, yeah. so crazy to see and hear how you've changed and the voice and the way you say things today are so different than how you said them four years ago, you know, three years ago, maybe like it's wild. Yeah. What do you, what do you attribute all that to? Um, I mean, I'd say it's just like kind of, I, I think part of it's probably just age. You know, like I, when I first started in business, I was like 20, you know, 20, 21. I was, I was just, a, I was just a munchkin, like just a, a freaking degenerate frat boy college kid. Um, and I mean, I think a lot of it is just the, the amount of responsibility that you have running a business, being someone who supports themselves, you know, completely by themselves, not through, you know, it's like you either make money and you eat or you don't and you don't eat like it's a hundred percent on your back. Like everyone talks about, you know, the freedom that you, you get when you achieve some sort of success with, with business, especially with online business with the, you know, the nature of it being online where you don't have to be in any physical location. Um, but with that freedom comes a lot of responsibility. So I think that a lot of it has just been, I've, I've grown up because I've had a lot of responsibility. Like, I mean, at this point we have, you know, multiple people, on our team who rely on our business to put food on the table, Wow, you know, and like, I don't take that, I don't take that lightly. Like that's a, that's a pretty serious thing. Um, so there, there's a, I think there's a lot of these things in business where it just kind of forces you to grow up. It forces you to become more mature and it forces you to just be like less of a shithead in general, because if you want things to work out well, I mean, you have to act like a responsible human being. (laughs) Because at what point you, described yourself as inconsistent or lazy prior to starting all this 
And I'm curious how you've developed the level of consistency and responsibility needed to have a business, have people that you employ who rely on you and be that force of responsibility for people. Yeah. Um, wait, hold on. Say that one more time. <laughs> How have you managed to go from lazy or inconsistent like you were, let's say, in college before starting to someone who's consistent and responsible in the workforce? I mean, at, at this point in my life, like after the first like six months, it wasn't anything that I had to work on. Like it was just it was who I was. It was it wasn't a question. It was like, this is just what I wake up and I do every day. I think for me, like the, the biggest thing was just like one day I just made that decision where, you know, I just kind of knew my personality. I knew that I was the type of person where if I didn't put myself in a, a situation where my back was against the wall that, you know, I probably wouldn't do anything. So I put myself in that situation by dropping out of college and giving myself like six months to just figure out, you know, how to make money. And as you know, the first day, like the first day that after I dropped out of college, that's when it started and it has not stopped since. Like, that's just how it's been. And you know, back then I was, I was working a hell of a lot more hours. You know, I was working all day, every day. Like that was all I was doing nowadays. You know, it's, I'm not working nearly as much, but I'm still, you know, on a daily basis. Like I'm still, I'm still on my laptop. That's still you know, my, my desktop now. That's still the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, you know, I, I'm working at least a couple hours in the morning. Um, you know, in a lot of, in a lot of days, you know, more than that. But I think, I mean, for me, it was just like that initial period where I just had to kind of go through that huge transformation in like my day-to-day -day life. You know, I went from just like going to class and hanging out with my friends and smoking pot and drinking and just like fucking around, like, you know, living the college lifestyle. Um, you know, I went from that to just working my ass off all the time. And once I had done that for, you know, a couple months and especially once I'd done that for a couple months and then seen the actual results of it, seeing the money in my bank account, seeing how that allowed me to live a better life than most people. Um, you know, I mean, it's not even a question. It's like, if something made you feel really good, you know, would you keep doing it? Like, yeah, probably. So, you know, just stuck with it. It's so interesting because what I notice is a clear start date of that. And it's like, for someone going through the motions in their life, it doesn't necessarily have to be dropping out of college, but it, it can be changing your life in some drastic way that says to your mind, this is a new version of you. And what's really crazy is that mm -hmm. every day we wake up and this is a new version of us, but we often don't think about it like that. We often, there are big moments that we can point to. And so, yeah, that's a big moment in your life. And would you recommend people take a big step or to separate their lives in that way of like, this is a big moment. I'm going to attack life differently from here. I mean, I think it depends on your situation. I think it depends on your personality. Like I, I fully recognize that putting yourself in a, a tough position like that, where your only choice is basically to succeed or like, you know, have some sort of very negative consequence. Like maybe that wouldn't work for everyone's personality type. Mm -hmm. For me though, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I needed. Like if, if I didn't do that, I, I'd probably be working a marketing job, making like 60 K a year somewhere, you know, which just wouldn't be the worst thing. My life would, wouldn't be terrible. Um, but I wouldn't get to live the lifestyle that I do now. And I think for, I mean, again, I'm speaking from, from my experience. I don't really know how this works for other people, but for me, like I just got so sick of where I was at and just like this gnawing feeling in my stomach and just this anxiety and just feeling like I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing. You know, like I just felt like terrible. I, I felt like a piece of shit. And eventually I just got sick of it, man. I just got tired of it. And I was just like, all right, I'm, I'm tired of feeling like this. Like I'm tired. I, I know that this is what I want to do. I know I want to start a business. I haven't done any, I, I haven't actually taken any action yet. Like I'm done with this. Like I'm, I'm going to actually do it. Like if this is, I'm, I'm tired of this. And it just like, it took me, you know, enough months and years of that building up for me to just finally be like, all right, this is it. Like I, I've reached my fucking tipping point. Like something's got to change. So I think if you feel like that, then doing something like that, absolutely can be beneficial. If you have this feeling that you know you should be doing it and you just haven't yet, like just feel that. Feel that how shitty you feel because you know you should be doing it and you're not. And let it get to a point where you can't take it anymore and you just have to, you have to do something. Like that that's what it was for me. I just felt like I absolutely had to do something. 
And then I made that big decision. And from there, like once I made that decision, it was, there was no going back. Like it was too late. I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't go back on that. There was no like, oh yeah, well, you know, I changed my mind. Like at that point, it was, I, I couldn't, like I, I had one option and that was it. So I think if, if that's how you feel then, and, and you're in a little life situation where you, other people don't rely on you, you know, I, if you're 50 and you have three kids, that's a very different situation than being in college and, you know, not having anyone rely on you. But if you're in that kind of situation and you don't have much to lose, I'd say that that's an absolutely great thing to do. What's the first step? I think the first step, I mean, the first step is figuring out what it is that you actually want. Like if you have that figured out, like you want to start a business or do you want to get in shape or whatever it is, you got to figure out what you want. Um, and then I think the, the next step is just like feeling all of that, that terrible, that terribleness, like that feeling of, I feel like a piece of shit because I want this and I haven't done anything about it. And then you just got to like get to that point where it's too much. And then once it's too much, then the next step from there is deciding that, okay, like this is it. Like I'm, I'm fucking doing it. Like I've wanted to do this for however long I haven't done anything about it. I feel absolutely terrible that I'm not living my life in alignment with what I say, what I think I want. So that's it. Like that's enough. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm going to do it. And you make that decision. And I mean, for me, it was very, it was very binary. It was like, I made that decision and then that was it. And then everything changed from there. And I didn't, you know, it took me a couple months to actually get results from that. But I mean, it was overnight, man. I went from waking up at 9 a.m., you know, just like fucking off doing whatever to waking up 6 a.m. every morning, you know, just grinding every single day. And, you know, it didn't take that long to start getting some results. I want to run through a brick wall right now. Okay, so <laughs> so it's 6 a.m., like, and you're waking up. Take us through those first few days of, like, what that experience was like and that first I don't know, three, three months of like, actually it panning out, like take us through those months because I think someone listening could really is thinking I'm in that situation. I would like to know what those first three months looked like. Yeah. So I actually, I, I wonder if I could find this and send this to you and maybe you could, um, you can edit this in and post. Mm -hmm. I, I, I took a video, um, the first day that I dropped out of college, me in my car at 6 AM driving the library to, to go get started on work. Amazing. And I was like, you know, whatever. I was like, all right, this is day one. I'm officially not in school anymore. It's 6 a.m. I'm going to the library to try to figure out how to make some money. And I mean, basically, I mean, what my day looked like was like, by that point I had already spent the last like, probably four to six months doing research in my spare time, just like, you know, in the library, just figuring out ways to make money and stuff like that. So I kind of already gotten like the basics of that understanding down. Um, and I kind of like known the path, the path that I wanted to go, which was um, freelance copywriting, you know, doing marketing for existing businesses. So my day essentially was wake up. Like, I, I mean, I wouldn't even, I, I don't even know how I did this because like nowadays it takes me like an hour to wake up, but I'd literally wake up and I would just get to work within like 10 minutes. Like I was, or I was doing something within 10 minutes. A lot of that, like the, at the beginning, it was kind of just like reading, like I was reading a lot of marketing material, reading copywriting books, reading, um, you know, stuff from Ben Settle and stuff like that. Um, so I'd read a little bit in the morning and then actually, I wonder, I wonder if I could pull this up. I can, I can literally walk through. I have, I, I had a schedule that I wrote down on, um. I tweeted this one time. Let me see if I can find this real quick. It was basically like my daily schedule. Um, yep. All right. Well, I found that very, very quickly. So wake up at six. I would, I, on this day specifically, this was Thursday, February the 1st, 2018. That must've been. So um, not that long ago in the grand scheme of life. Like just want to put that in perspective. No. Yeah, no, I mean, it was three years ago. Like that was three and a half years ago now. Um, not that long ago at all. So I, I woke up, I would drink some coffee, um, read a book. I would, at this point, actually, this is funny. I had already started my, my email list because that was like what I was doing to try to get better at writing copy. I was probably writing to like five people. There were probably like five people on my email list. Um, so I'd, I'd, that was the first thing I'd always do in the morning is wake up, write, write my daily email, read a little bit more. Um, at that point I was also doing some marketing for my mom's friends company. 
It was like a you know a doctor's office. So I would uh, I wrote, on this day I wrote an email for their business. Um, I did some cold outreach. I think this is at this point I was doing freelance copywriting and I was also working on drop shipping. So those were like kind of the two things I'd already had. I already had like a client or two. So I was like at 9 a.m. on the schedule, it says reach out to Insta pages, which I think is to do like Instagram shout outs for my shop shipping store at that time. Um, and then the next thing on there is to find clients, potential clients to cold email. So I do that for an hour, um, write cold emails for an hour to whoever I, whatever prospects I was able to find, personalize them as much as I could, um, work out, chill, the 1 30 PM says chill slash Twitter, which I assume is just like a, that's a little break. Um, next thing was to create Facebook ads and set new Facebook ads up for that drop shipping store I was running. And then that was basically the end of that work day. And then I would go to work, go to my pizza delivery job. That's what I was doing at that time. So I'd wake up at 6 AM, basically work until like four. And then I'd go to work and work from like five until 11 and then get home, do it all over again. Does part of you miss those days of the, the Absolutely, grind? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I miss the the part of it where everything, like my, the bar was so low that it, like everything was a win, you know? Like anything decent that happened was a win. Whereas now like the bar is so high that like t- to get that same feeling of like, yes, like I'm fucking winning. Like I just, I gotta do like something amazing has to happen, you know? And I miss, I miss the days where the bar was so low that if, if a client, if a potential client emailed me back, you know, if I sent a cold email and someone messaged me back, like, I was like, dude, like, let's fucking go. Like, I was so hyped. Um, whereas now, you know, like, it's just, it's crazy how when you make progress, the, the new level that you get to becomes normal so quickly. And it just, I mean, it's almost like, like heroin or something where like, like you just build up a tolerance to it and you just got to keep getting more and more and more to get that same feeling. And I really don't know if there will be any any sort of milestone that I hit in business from this point out, like from the point I'm at now for the rest of my life, I really don't know if there's going to be any any better feeling than that feeling of making my first sale or getting my first client. Like the high from that was so incredible. I, I don't think anything else compares. I mean, I've, I've achieved so much more than that since then. And just none of it in terms of how it made me feel, none of it has compared to that so wild i remember hearing the story of stephen bartlett are you familiar with stephen bartlett um i don't think so so he had this social media company thing called social chain and he sold it in the past i don't know two years maybe three years and he saw his bank balance go up by i don't know eight figures nine figures i don't know what it was and he mm-hmm. didn't feel any differently and he freaked out and it's like, <laughs> that's wild to think about. Like, and so he came to the same conclusion we've been talking about, which is that the feeling of slow, gradual progress is better than the actual destination. But just to hear him talk about that, how does that make you feel as someone who's working towards an eight figure exit? Uh, it's slightly disappointing. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like uh, it's, I know, like, I know that that's how it's going to be now. Is it going to be, am I going to feel nothing? No, I don't think I'm going to feel nothing. I think that, you know, when that check hits, like that'll be, it'll feel good, you know? But at the end of the day, man, like it's just, it's freaking numbers on a screen. Yep. And like past a certain point, there's like, there's not a whole lot more until I get to the point where I can spend like, I don't know, like a ridiculous amount of money on my lifestyle. Like, 50 grand a month until I get to that point. I don't think there's a whole lot that I can do in terms of like spending more money to really improve my lifestyle and my overall quality of life that much. So, you know, I'm kind of just waiting out for that. And then, you know, once I get to that point, then, you know, maybe I'll be able to, maybe I'll upgrade my lifestyle a lot and my quality of life will increase. But I mean, dude, like it's tough. Like it's the, the balance of like, where I'm at now is like such a comfortable place. Like there's, there, it's a very real thing where I just feel like, is it even, you know, all like all that extra work, like, is it even worth doing all that? Like, I don't know. 
I don't really know. And I, I mean, I think that that's probably reflected in the way I've been living my life <laughs> the last couple of months, the amount of golf I've been playing. Like, I don't know. I don't know. And maybe, maybe I'm just being a pussy. Maybe I'm just getting too comfortable and maybe I need something to jog me out of that. Um, but it is, it, it's, it's very strange. And I, I think that it'll, it'll feel good when I, when I reach that goal, but I don't think it'll compare that. I mean, that those first couple months, man, like it was, it was pure, pure ecstasy because I was, I was so like unsure if I could do it or not. You know, when I was first getting started, like I had no idea if I could actually make this work. And then just proving that to myself was the best thing in the entire world. Like, it just felt like, holy shit. Like, dude, you did it. Like you wanted to do this and you fucking did it. Like that's nuts. And now I'm like, it, it's similar, but it's like, it just doesn't, it doesn't hit the same man. Like the, the, those first, those first few wins just hit absolutely different. What, why do you think the first sale was so impactful in that way? Cause I, th I think the, the main thing is like kind of what, what I was just saying is it's you prove to yourself that it's real. The entire time you're you're you know working for months at this one thing and you you know it's a thing like you've seen other people do it and you're like yeah like maybe that's possible but you've never seen that it's possible for you and then when you do it you see that it's possible for you and then you're like oh my god like this is fucking real and it just hits you like a ton of bricks because this entire time you've been so unsure and then you have this undeniable proof right in front of you that all this time that you've been spending wasn't for nothing. Like there is actually something here and you just feel like so validated in what you've been doing, what you've been spending your time on when you finally first start to see those results. And I mean, I think that you probably, you know, you experience similar things at higher levels, but it's just, it's not the same because at this point I know that it's extremely possible for me to build and sell an e-com brand for 10 million plus. An I, I'm not statement. questioning that at all. <laughs> Like, that's not even, it's not even a thought in my mind. Like, can I, can this, you know, can I do this? Can this happen? I know for a fact, like, it's not even a question. Is it going it, to, may it take 10 years? Maybe, who knows? Ideally, ideally not. Ideally, it takes a, a little bit less than that. Um, but it's just not the same. Like, I, I've, I, when you first prove it to yourself, you prove that it's real. And then from there, like, you kind of already have that knowing, at least to a certain extent. And... It just, it doesn't, it doesn't hit the same when you, when you reach that goal, you don't have that huge realization, like, oh my God, this is it. Like you, you already kind of knew that. I think the way out from feeling complacent is to play for the love of the game and play for the sake of playing. And I think, and, and other, the other thing is to extend the target to something so crazy and so ridiculous so that you can keep playing forever. For, I think about Gary Vaynerchuk. I want to buy the New York Jets. Why does he want to buy the New York Jets? Because it will allow him to keep playing the game that he loves, business, for a long, long time. Why do I want to sell out Madison Square Garden? Because that's such a ridiculously huge goal for me currently at where I'm at as a podcaster that I say it's going to take me a long time to get there. And that's good because the longer I'm playing this game, the more enjoyment I will get out of it. So I think that's the way out to extend the time frame to make the goals bigger so that and make them meaningful to you so that you are still striving like it's day one, even though you're in this place where you're already secure and you don't have to do it. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. I think that lengthening your, your time horizon is huge for that and just realizing like just you don't have to trade your happiness today for some huge goal way out in the future. Like you can be happy now, yep. even if you haven't achieved it, you can still be happy right now and you can enjoy the process all the way. And I think, I think you kind of have to, if you want to reach these huge goals, you're not going to do it. If you hate what you're doing, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, like you're not going to hit those crazy huge goals. Cause you're just, you're not going to stick with it long enough. You know, if, if you get tired of it, like you're out, you can only push through something that you don't like for so long, you know, especially when it's like, when it's a job and you're doing it for someone else, like someone else is telling you what you have to do. And it's, it's a bit easier in that situation because it's like, you don't have a choice, but when it's something that you're doing for yourself, you do have that choice. You know, like if I, if I wanted to, I could stop doing business entirely. Like, I, I don't know what the hell I would do to make money. You know, I'd, I'd be fine for, for a little while, but, um, you know, I, I have that choice. It's, it's entirely within, you know, 
my control. So it becomes a lot more difficult, I think, to continue on with things that you don't like doing. And that's, that's kind of a, a big part of why I haven't made a YouTube video in, I don't know, probably almost six months now. Um, I just got tired of it. I, I stopped enjoying it. I felt like it was just like such a, a job. I, I felt like so much pressure to be putting out, you know, two videos a week or three videos a week or one video a week, whatever it was. And I just stopped enjoying it. And once I stopped enjoying it, dude, it's like what used to take me an hour started taking me four hours, you know? And it was just like so, so difficult to get myself to do that. And, you know, I'm fortunate to be in a position where I was able to just stop doing that and, you know, I'm okay. Like, you know, my, my income didn't go to zero. Um, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're still out here, you know? <laughs> But if you if, if you hate doing something, if you and even if you don't hate it, even if you're just like kind of like, eh, I don't really want to do this. Like, if you have that feeling, I, I think it's gonna be really tough to reach those huge long term goals. Definitely. And I think even if it's something, you know, there's always gonna be things that you don't enjoy doing. You know, there's things that I have to do that I don't particularly enjoy that are part of you know what I do. Um. But if on the whole you generally enjoy what you do, I mean, you're gonna be way more successful. Like that's just that's just how that works. And I think that it's whether or not you feel like that is it's not entirely just about like a natural thing where it's like, I either like this or I don't, you, you can either like it or not based off of how you look at it, based off of how you treat it, based off the way that you operate. And if you have a really short time horizon and you have this really lofty goal and you're really trying to get to it fast and you don't hit it, that's going to be really discouraging. That's probably going to make you not like it as much as you used to. Whereas if you have a really long time horizon, yeah, exactly you have a really long time horizon and you just kind of have this idea in your head, like, yeah, it's going to happen eventually. I'm not really sure when, but it will. That just gives you the freedom to just kind of do the things that you enjoy doing and to, I mean, not even just do the things that you enjoy doing, but to enjoy the things that you are doing, you know, because you don't have all that pressure on you and you're not constantly feeling like a piece of shit because you failed to hit some crazy goal in some short period of time. Life becomes more like play when you, Think about it from that perspective, as opposed to, I need to work to achieve this, to get here. And your work then becomes better, which is the fascinating thing. So talk me through yeah. how you figured that out for YouTube. Um, I mean, I don't know if I have it figured out <laughs> per se. Um, I mean, this is something that I'm, I'm going through myself, man. Like I don't enjoy, you know, the work that I do nearly as much as I used to. Mm. Like I used to get up and just be like, dude, like we're getting to it. Like, this is all I want to do. Like, it's amazing. Now it's like, I, I feel incredibly blessed that like the things that I, I do on a daily basis for work are like, I mean, dude, it's, it's not like, you know, super difficult stuff. It's stuff that I, I think are like, you know, it's fairly, fairly easy, generally speaking, you know, compared to what it could be. Um, but I mean, dude, this is something I'm still trying to navigate. And for me, it's just like, I just, I had to do that. That was an experiment. Like stopping making YouTube videos was an experiment for me to try to figure out like, is this feeling that I'm having of like not being as interested or excited about my work? Is this because of YouTube? So put that down for a little while. And, you know, I think I kind of realized that, yeah, like that was, that was a big part of it because I, I had this, you know, this pressure on myself to reach certain, you know, certain subscriber goals for us to get a certain amount of people on our email list for us to sell, you know, a certain amount of revenue through blue ocean. Um, and I just didn't really enjoy it anymore. So stop doing that. And now I'm like, I'm kind of like, I think kind of building back in the sense where the same thing, same kind of thing happened for with Twitter for me, um, like probably two years ago. And now I'm kind of getting to the point where I've started, you know, for, for the last two years up until pretty recently, like I, I barely tweeted, you know, like once every couple of days. Um, and now I'm kind of like, after not creating a lot of content for a while, I started to miss it. I started to be like, well, I actually do enjoy doing this. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've started just, you know, putting out more content, you know, tweeting more just when I feel like it, you know, not like as a, I have to do this today. And I mean, I do, I, I do have it like on my schedule, like, you know, like put some time into this, but if I don't feel like doing it, like I just, I just don't do it, you know, like I, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and obviously like you can't do that with everything. Like there are some things that you have to do regardless of how you feel. Um, but I think like what I've learned is I'm much more like, I, I really like e-com and like actual building brands. I, I like that more than I like creating content, which wasn't always the case. 
And I think I kind of had to go through that. Like there was a period of, the, of my life where I was not doing very much work on our brand and I was just creating a bunch of content. And I just like, I ran out of stuff to talk about. Like, I just like, dude, I've talked about everything. Like I'm not even doing all that much with our brand. Like I'm not even that in tune with what's going on. So I don't have like that fucking, that oxygen to like be able to create content with. Um, so since I stopped doing YouTube, then, you know, I kind of started focusing more on our brand and we started a, a new brand that we're working on. That's kind of like my, you know, my main project right now. And I've been enjoying that a lot more. And it's, it's still, it's still, I'm not gonna lie. It still doesn't have that same appeal that it did when I first got started. But honestly, I think part of that probably has to do with golf. Cause I've just fucking fallen in love with the game of golf. And like, that's all I want to do now. Um, but I think that's, you know, that's how it goes. And I, at the end of the day, I mean, I feel incredibly blessed, even though sometimes I don't want to do these things. Um, that's just, you know, that's the way it is. Like, fuck what you feel like. You just, you just do the work, you know? I feel like part of what you just talked about is something that I think a lot of people experience, which is that your interests and passions and where you find enjoyment and love is different and can change throughout your life. And particularly from 15 to 25 or maybe 15 to 30, right? It's like you're in that period of experimenting, of figuring out what you like, what you don't like. And I think some people beat themselves up for this of like, I don't know what I want to do and everyone else seems to have it figured out, but not realizing that this is a process we all go through of trying to figure out exactly what we enjoy in any given moment and it can change. And so, yeah, man, I admire your commitment to continue to experiment and try and tinker because it's something that a lot of people beat themselves up over and it shows a lot of maturity and growth. Yeah, man. I mean, like as you get older, stuff changes, you know, like you, you grow and change and, um, you know, what you wanted to do 10 years ago might not be what you want to do now. And I think that's fine. Like, as long as you can find a way to, I mean, obviously you have to make a living, like you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to support yourself. You can't be a bum. Um, but as long as you can find a way to do that and, you know, make time for the things that you love doing, like, I think that's really what matters. And, you know, like I've had the thought, like, dude, do, do I want to stop all this business stuff and just literally grind my ass off and try to become like some sort of professional golfer? Maybe, I don't know. Like that, that's an idea I've certainly had because I get a lot more enjoyment from that these days than I do from most of the stuff I'm doing for work. Um, is that gonna happen anytime soon? Probably not, but it's, it's a thought I certainly had. And, you know, who knows, maybe there will be a point where we sell a brand and I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm pretty good for, for at least a little while. Um, and maybe that, maybe that is something I want to pursue. I don't know, but I think you just kind of got to take it day by day and don't put so much pressure on yourself to like figure everything out right now. Cause I've done that. And it's, it's tough, man, because I, I have this idea in my head where if I can figure out what I want for my life over the next 40 years, I can make like a, a 40 year, 20 year, 30 year, whatever it is like master plan. And you know, that's how you, that's how you do it. Like that's how you achieve huge things because these huge things that you want to achieve are going to take a lot of time. And it's tough to do that when you're not really sure exactly what you want. And I, there's been times where I put a lot of pressure on myself and I've been, you know, really like trying to figure out what do I want on a 20 year time scale? Like, what do I want? And I think all you can do is you can figure out what you think you want right now. And you can make that, that 20 year plan, that whatever year plan, and it doesn't have to be set in stone, you know, that can change. And I think you gotta give yourself the flexibility and the freedom to change course. If things change the thing, the 20 year plans are great. And to know and think about what you would like in 20 years, the problem I have with them is that the world is changing so quickly that the thing that you might enjoy the most 10 years from now might not have been invented yet. And that's wild to yeah. think about. Think about this communication, me and you talking 10 years ago. In 2011, it'd be very difficult for us to have a conversation like this, record it, put it on the internet. And now that's widespread and anyone can do. And so it's, it's really a matter of constantly reevaluating and checking in with yourself of, am I finding enjoyment from X? Am I finding enjoyment from Y? And I think you've done a tremendous job at doing that. 
Yeah, man. I, I think so. I mean, I try and it's not been easy, man. Like it's definitely not been easy. And I, I still have this, you know, this thought in the back of my head, like on a daily basis these days, like, am I doing enough? You know, like am, is and what I'm spending my time on, is that what I should be doing? You know, is that what's going to get me to my goals? Is that how I should be spending my time? And, you know, I never really know for sure. I don't think anyone really knows for sure, but all you can do is just do the best that you can and, you know, use all the information that you have to try to make the best decisions you can and keep going from there, I suppose. It's a beautiful way to wrap things up. Nate, where can people find you further and connect with you and let you know how much they enjoyed this conversation? Uh, probably Twitter. Twitter would probably be the best place. SCHM7DT. It's my last name with a seven for the I. You can find me there. You can uh, shoot me a message. I, if I don't respond, I don't. I don't check my messages very often, but sometimes I do. Um, you can tweet me. I'll, I'll see. I'll be a lot more likely to see it if you actually tweet at me. Um, and then besides that, the ecom dispensary. If you're interested in ecom and you want to kind of get brainwashed with content that's going to hopefully make you better and more likely to succeed, then that is what the ecom dispensary is for. You can find that at ecomdispensary.com. Awesome. And we'll put those two links below. Thank you again for taking the time. It's always a pleasure to catch up with you, my friend. And I'm so grateful for you as a friend, as a podcast host, and just uh, as a human being. Thank you. Dude, back freaking at you, man. It's been, it's just so incredible to talk to you, man. Like I've known you for, I mean, it seems like for a really long time, I guess in, in retrospect, it's really not all that long, but just to, to be able to get on with you and talk to you and just like, it's, it hits different, man. Like I, I was feeling like not that great this morning. And just after this, I feel incredible. So thank you for having me. It's been awesome.